Hey guys, and welcome back. Thanks to all of you who have signed the petition for a new investigation, a scientifically led investigation for the Son Jung Min case at the National Assembly and to release that CCTV footage, especially from the bridge. We're over two thirds of the way there. We have until September 18th. So it's really important we get out the final push to try to get this investigation relaunched and we have some really good news a major politician has backed the efforts of Son Jung Min and said that he would see it to the end and we have really big big juicy news on SJM's father's blog that I've been sitting on for a little bit while we've been covering Burning Sun but actually SJM's father has been sitting on it way longer and he's been releasing it and I am surprised that obviously the mainstream media has not been covering it so we're gonna go into it in full detail just wait okay so who is this high-level politician that has decided to back Sun Jung Min's father his name is Hwang Kyo An. And of course, yes, we have gone over some old Korean men doing all sorts of crazy business on this channel, especially when they're running for president. Yes, the presidential election is next spring. And yes, he is also running for president. He hasn't been doing all sorts of crazy business, so that's why we haven't really been talking about him. And he's also declared his candidacy a little bit late. But if you do recognize him, he was a former prime minister and he was the acting president after President Park got impeached. So yes, he is part of that <laughs> dreaded President Park administration. Yes, that cost me my job, my former job. But... He does seem actually quite level-headed and at his last press conference, which I won't get into, he actually went down the list of a bunch of bullet points of ideas for Korea that actually seemed quite rational. So I gotta hand it to him, even though he was associated with a presidential administration that I would rather never ever think about, seems pretty rational. Now, <laughs> Somebody on his campaign team is actually related to Son Jung Min's father. So that's where there is a personal connection. So see, there's nothing free in Korea, okay? There is nothing free. And unfortunately, yes, I guess you have to have some sort of real blood connection. So however this comes about, we do have to be thankful that a major politician is willing to put his name behind this effort. And he's probably also seeing like the real big uptick in the National Assembly petition. And what did I say? What did I say? There's a lot of people in the National Assembly. So if this petition goes through, that's a lot of people who are going to have to now politically calculate whether they're going to have to explain whether they vote yes or no against this this symbol this icon this person now Son Jung Min's father who can rally national attention like that so Hwang Gyo Wan actually met with Son Jung Min's parents and he posted on his Facebook saying that he is devastated by their loss and he really wants to find a resolution and he's going to support them to the end. He said, hearing his account made me uneasy and sick to the stomach. Citizens across the nation who have followed this case and seen how mismanaged it was are also sick to the stomach. Meanwhile, the police remain unresponsive. We must get rid of injustice for our people. So I'm going to put the full translated version of his whole Facebook post on the soullight.com. So you can go there to read the entire translated version of Hwang Gyo Wan's supportive Facebook message. All right, so let's get into SJM's dad's blog post where he really spills the tea on what 
came out of Mr. A's own mouth the day after everything happened. So remember, they met at a cafe at around 8 p.m. It was only about 24 minutes, but it was packed with information. This was before they had a lawyer manipulating all of the responses by Mr. A. So this is going to be as the unvarnished version of what Mr. A had said about the entire incident as we're probably ever going to get up until this point unless we re-release an investigation and perhaps even get a lie detector test. And so this is where SJM's father recorded Mr. A and Mr. A was asked questions directly by SJM's father and SJM's mother. And remember how Mr. A's position was that he blacked out since 11.14 p.m. to around 6.10 a.m. and he couldn't remember one thing. Well, according to this, according to all of this, there are so many accounts where he was basically going, well, what had happened was, well, what had happened was, well, what had happened was, he had so many memories of what had happened. Yeah, so how does somebody who claims to have blacked out have so many memories? So did you black out or do you really know what had happened? So SJM's father is trying to remind us before, before, before the lawyer got involved and said he couldn't remember a thing, Mr. A said plenty of, well, what had happened was. And we're going to go through it. So Mr. Son starts off with a little bit of a message to his son. That's how he delivers these blog posts. And he's getting a little bit more honest with his feelings, open with his feelings. I've heard from some other friends saying that before they had stopped reading some of the blogs because he had been a little bit too reserved and careful. So if that's you and you speak Korean, go read the blog again because he's getting sassy. So here he says to his son with a picture of the, the Y tree saying, this is where you and Mr. A spent most of your time that night. And it's where Mr. A and his parents were going up and down that morning for 20 minutes when they claimed they were looking for you. It makes my blood boil when that's what they were really doing when they told the police and us they were searching for you. I've been there so many times, but each time I go, it's extremely painful. Your stuffy father even did his own luminol test on the rocks down there. But more on that later. So now he's dropping hints of what he's going to release. Luminol test. I believe that's a blood test. Remember, again, there was obvious evidence of something that was red, that looked like blood, that they said wasn't blood, but obviously it looked like blood. So it looked like he did do some blood test. Luminol. So if you are a luminol expert, maybe you can put that in the comments below. He also posted in the third photo of 12.36 a.m. and 33 seconds. And that's when he's like laying down trying to look like, I don't know, like some Grecian god or something. Now, this is where he's implying some shade and maybe implying, remember there was that craziness with the girls running around on the plaza? I think he's trying to make a link with those girls. Okay, then this picture at 1242 shows that they went to the convenience store. Another eyewitness took a picture of your empty picnic mat, bottles, milk, home run balls, and sent the photo to unanswered questions. When the two of you came into the convenience store, you were holding a small bottle, then left it and went inside. So this is another kind of a hint or an implication. Is that small bottle that 
that uh, is it the is it the condition bottle or is it a different bottle that is implying that maybe i don't know again is it like the drug thing i don't know i don't know and then he says, it didn't seem like you had a plan. You were wandering around the store for a while. Then after a while, you guys decided to buy a bottle of makgeolli and a large bottle of soju. And suddenly you're in line. Mr. A spots a USB cable and makes a beeline to add it to the purchases. This time, Mr. A paid for the purchases with his card, so I don't have the receipt. The police said Mr. A bought one bottle of makgeolli, one bottle of soju, and one USB cable. This is probably when you guys were feeling the best. You drank all of the alcohol you had bought before you entered the park. This is the first time you bought additional alcohol at the park. You hadn't had a drop of makgeolli until after... after 12.45. Mr. A's mother claimed that her son started to black out at 11.14 p.m. when he had started to drink makgeolli. So that is a lie. The lawyer statement said that Mr. A had blackout out starting from 11.14 p.m. That is a lie. So he is basically saying that the blackout is a lie. Why? In a text message, Mr. A's mother said, Oh, he can't remember a thing. He blacked out at 11.14 p.m. after he drank the soju and makgeolli. But he is saying that, look, according to the evidence, they did not drink makgeolli until well after 12.45. 12.45 is when they bought it. So he, they probably drank it at around 1 a.m. So he obviously, for sure, wasn't even blacked out from 11 to, to 1, right? So that already chops off two hours from a potential blackout area. He is really already doing a scientifically based investigation, knocking down further and further this blackout theory. Why? Because it's going to open the door for a full questioning of Mr. A. Okay, 12.53, when you returned to your picnic mat, two friends messaged you about the Instagram story you posted. So remember at 12.36, they posted that really like seductive picture, kind of like, probably like as a joke, right? And then... At 12.53, when you returned to your picnic mat, two friends messaged you about the Instagram story you posted. They messaged SJM. These are two friends, two friends whom Mr. A had just met up with before meeting up with SJM. And he posts the messages. So... He doesn't post the full messages, so it's a little bit confusing, like, what they really mean. But it says something like, well, it seems that way. SJM says, his battery died, so it's charging. Heart, heart. And then it says, send this dude back home. Have fun. Heart, heart, SJM. He, 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 he. And then... SJM's father says, other friends may have seen the post later. I don't think you replied to these messages. I think Mr. A did. Number 107. Anyhow, so it says, when I met with them the next evening on April 26, Mr. A said, to be honest, that picture I took, that thing, which is basically he was calling SJM that thing, remember? Uploaded it to Instagram and Ms. X sent SJM a reply. It said, SJM opa, like a term of endearment. Make sure you send him back. And then SJM started laughing at that. Honestly, that's the last memory I had. So see, he did have a memory that was after 1114. So, and this is exactly, exactly what SJM's father said. Since this was at 1253 p.m., you obviously did not black out at 1114 p.m. And then... Well, let's say this was an either an exact translation or maybe loosely, sassily translated. You professional, professional translators tell me, but I think this is what SJM's father was essentially saying. The picture of Mr. A looking all sloppy on the floor wouldn't seem to me like a photo that would generate likes. 
But about 20 of your friends replied warmly, including a girl whom Mr. A had met before meeting you. I'm not sure if you uploaded this photo together with Mr. A, but he claims you two were laughing at the reply. However, I'm quite suspicious whether he was truly happy after seeing this girl reply to your Instagram story. I think that's the translation. So that was the photo based blog post that really started to poke a hole in Mr. A's claims that he had a blackout. Now let's go over what he actually said. But before this is also very sad, I'll post the direct translation, the full translation on the soullight.com. He said he had to print out some social security documents. And of course, this is like he's sending a letter to his dead son. And your name had been deleted off the database. There was this empty feeling to see that our family of three no longer was officially there anymore. It just doesn't seem possible that your name is no longer there. We'll meet again, won't we? That's really sad. That's really sad. Okay. So essentially, in this letter, he is prepping us for his legal battle. And he's basically saying, according to Mr. A's lengthy legal statement, Mr. A blacked out starting at 11.14 p.m. when he started drinking at the park, which was not even true because 11.14 p.m. was essentially when he paid, no, when SJM paid for the drinks at the park. And until 6.10 a.m. when he left the park the second time to go home with his parents. And Mr. A had really like argued that it according to experts it's entirely plausible and believable and possible and now sjm's father is saying well what is up with that because the next day after all of this happened we talked and he was telling us all sorts of memories of what happened that night Okay, so let's try to get through this. 11.33 p.m. Mr. A remembers buying the picnic mat. He said, we went to the convenience store and went to go sit and also went to buy a picnic mat and then drank. Doesn't sound like a blackout. 12.53 to 12.55, Mr. A remembers SJM uploading to Instagram and reading the replies. To be honest, that picture I took, that thing, referring to SJM, uploaded it to Instagram and Ms. X sent SJM a reply. It said, SJM Opa, make sure you send him back. And then SJM started laughing at that. Honestly, that's the last memory I had. See, remember like those, those girls that were running around? I think that actually that girl may be the one that had replied. Who knows? And then she was worried about them and Mr. A and they need to be questioned. They seriously need to be questioned. It would fit. And then SJM's parents said, since you didn't upload the photo, Chungmin and you were together looking at the photo that he took of you. And then Mr. A said, yes. So that is totally a memory that is not indicative of a blackout. 1.48 a.m. Mr. A remembers SJM filming him climbing the tree. SJM's mom. When you were climbing this tree, wasn't it a bit dangerous? Did Chungmin climb the tree by any chance? Mr. A. Chungmin didn't climb up the tree. He most likely was just filming for me. Memory is of his smartphone before 2 a.m. SJM's mom, after drinking like this, did you leave your phone to the side on the ground like this and just drink? Mr. A, yes, we weren't on our phones the whole time. We just had them on the ground. So a blacked out person is going to remember like where their phone was? Memories of the surroundings after 2 a.m. SJM's parents, were there many people around you after 2 a.m.? Mr. A, when we were goofing around, there were lots of people around, but when I was trying to wake him up and it started to get light outside, 
I don't think there were that many people. Again, this does not sound like somebody blacked out. He told us what had happened. Memories of trying to wake up SJM between 2 a.m. and 3 a.m., giving up and then falling asleep. Mr. A, that was probably a bit after 3 a.m. SJM's mom, 3 a.m.? Mr. A, yes. SJM's mom, were you awake until then or were you sleeping and then did you wake up? Mr. A, I was continuously throwing up and so I was waking up frequently. So I was trying to wake up Chung Min too, but I gave up and just lied down next to him and slept. SJM's mom, you were throwing up and not sleeping until 3 a.m.? Mr. A, I would have slept too because... SJM's mom, sleep, throw up, sleep, and then throw up? Mr. A, that was 2 a.m. That's why I really can't remember the exact time. So he's giving timestamps and then not giving timestamps. I think he knew what had happened and now he's backtracking because he's trying to make sure that he is trying to cover his tracks. Remembering waking up Chung Min after 3 a.m. Mr. A, I remember trying really hard to wake up Chung Min. It woke up once. See, he's calling Chung Min it. It woke up once, probably a little past 3 a.m. as James mom. 3 a.m.? Mr. A, yes. That's what had happened according to Mr. A, who was apparently blackout drunk. Remembering Chung Min falling at 3.31 a.m. Remember, we have video evidence. Here is the first account. Mr. A, one memory I have is that Chung Min was running and fell on that slope, you know. SJM's mom, where? Whereabouts did he fall? Mr. A, uh, well, that slope you saw. You know, there's that flat area, the slope and the river. Mr. A's mom, there's a slope and a slight decline. Mr. A, yeah, there. SJM's mom, oh, okay, that's where he was about to fall? Mr. A, he fell, yeah. Second account, SJM's dad, did Jung Min fall in the water? Or did he almost fall in the water? Mr. A, uh, when he fell, uh, there was distance between the water. SJM's dad, there was, right? Mr. A, for sure, there was. Again, Mr. A is sure, sure about a memory when he was blackout drunk. Memory of where Chung Min fell at 3.31 a.m. What had happened was SJM's mom showing video on the smartphone. This is the tree, right? Correct? Mr. A. This should be the right hill, the slope behind this tree. S. James' mom. We've searched for other trees and there aren't any that look the same. Right behind that tree is the water. So you're saying Chung Min fell from here? Mr. A. It was near there. See? So remember now from the other videos, especially remember that video from Mr. Shin's YouTube channel where they did the experiments? Right next to that tree was that little entryway with the little path. And remember when I went to go visit that little path that went straight down to the riverbank? That's where he claimed SJM fell or got pushed, according to the CCTV and the experiments. Memory of supposedly dragging Chung Min up at 3.31 a.m. What had happened was, this is what SJM's father wrote. Initially, Mr. A claimed all of the following happened before 3 a.m. So in this text, in this dialogue, we're gonna hear him say, everything happened before 3 a.m. But, when eyewitnesses claim to have seen Chung Min sleeping on the picnic mat from 2 a.m. to a little after 3 a.m., which makes all of this impossible, 
Mr. A changed the timeline in his subsequent testimony to his advantage. So to say like, oh, all of this happened after 3 a.m. So he is going to now go over the dialogue that they did have. First one, Mr. A, that's where he fell, asked James Bond. So you ultimately pulled him back up? Mr. A, yes, most likely. And then I started shaking him real hard, asked James Mom. This was while he was sleeping at 3 a.m. before you woke up, Chung Min? Mr. A, I think it was before then, asked James Mom. Before then? Mr. A, yes, all this happened before then. So he is admitting that all of this happened before 3 a.m. So he's saying he pulled him back up before 3 a.m. and started trying to wake him up before 3 a.m. And then afterwards, he said that he was trying to wake him up at around 3.30 a.m. Second dialogue. SJM's mom. So it was 2 a.m. and you filmed the video. Then Chung Min ran around, almost fell into the water, and dragged him, and you dragged him back up to the grass. Did you or he get wet? Did Chung Min get hurt? Mr. A. My memory. SJM's mom. You were groaning and pulling him up? Are you sure you pulled him up? Mr. A. Yes, because I remember I was trying to wake him up after I dragged him up. SJM's mom. When he had been pulled back up? Mr. A. That's why I said on the grass after I pulled him up, hey, we gotta go. SJM's mom. You woke him up after you dragged him back up, but since it looked like he went back to sleep, you went to sleep with him too, right? Do you remember anything else? Anything else after you woke up and left? Mr. A, yes. See, Mr. A's answers are very vague and a little shifty, wouldn't you say? Memory of the location and conditions when waking up around 4.30 a.m. What had happened was... Location. SJM's mom. Is this where Chung Min fell? This is where you woke up from being drunk, right? Mr. A. Around there. Regarding the conditions. Mr. A. Well, it's not like someone was shaking me and I saw someone right after I opened my eyes. It was like I was sleeping and there was something bugging me on the cheek. You know that feeling. It was just like a glimpse. That's what I remember. Again, for somebody who was blackout drunk and claimed he didn't remember anything, he certainly was very specific about how he sort of saw somebody who really like was kind of out of the corner of his eye who sort of woke him up. It wasn't like a specific person that woke him up. Again, super shady, super, yeah. He's basically trying to say like, don't ask me, don't, don't ask me who woke me up or try to make me identify who woke me up. It was like the wind woke me up or maybe it was a person. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I haven't decided yet. We don't know if we've, you know, paid enough for the, the witness. Memory of surroundings around 4.30 a.m. SJM's mom, when you came out around you, were there people? One, two, A, Mr. A, like Mr. A cuts her off. At that time, I think there was almost no one there. Memory of Chung Min not being there when he went home at 4.30 a.m. What well, happened was, Mr. A, to be honest, I was filmed leaving, but I really have no memory of what I saw truly, but for sure Chung Min most likely wasn't there. Grammatically, that makes no sense. Because when I was continuing to shake him, I thought I must take care of him. Even when I drink a little bit, I have that sense of responsibility. This is, remember I told you about Korean being a, you able to manipulate the language? Well, this, I don't think, flies even for Koreans. You can smell the BS on this. First of all, most likely wasn't there in Korean. That basically means for certain, most likely. That makes no sense. So basically, that's kind of a lie. And then 
He was saying that, why was he so sure? This makes no sense because when I was shaking him, I thought I must take care of him. And then he's like praising himself. Oh, because when even when I drink a little bit, I have this sense of responsibility. What? But then he says, I have no memory of what I saw. This is the type of answers that gaslighters, uh, people who have some sort of condition that is prone to trying to manipulate people give, where things just do not make sense and compute. And for this reason, this reason and many others throughout this entire dialogue of the he wins the what had happened was Olympics. This completely should have been brought up way earlier, way earlier, way earlier. This should have even almost like headlined the discussions about whether he really did black out or not. Because obviously from this transcript, it shows that he had plenty of memories that contradict any claims of a blackout. Okay guys, so what do you think? After all of this, do you really think that Mr. A can stand on the argument that he blacked out and therefore should not be questioned in greater detail of what happened that night? And why do you think the police just let it slide? Especially now we know in more detail where the police is willing to go in terms of negotiations with cases like the Burning Sun incident. Put your comments below, guys, and don't forget to spread the petition to people in Korea and outside of Korea. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye, guys. Tune in next time. Don't forget to subscribe. Find us on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Love you.